Okay, today we're going to look at some of the activities that you're going to do in the electrostatics lab. The electrostatics lab has two different aspects to it. One is using clear tape or cellophane tape. You might know it as scotch tape. The other is doing it with a pith ball. The pith ball and the cellophane tape are very lightweight. And this is going to allow you to see the effects because, just frankly, we won't be able to build up a lot of charge. And so um, we want something that will react very dramatically without putting a lot of force on it. Uh, there's different kinds of cellophane tape. Uh, some of them are almost completely transparent, so it's almost like you can't see them at all. I find the ones that are slightly uh, opaque uh, work a little bit better than the others. Um, we're going to make little tabs that we're going to build up charge on. By pulling the piece of tape up quickly, we'll be able to build up some charge. So right now, while I'm not trying to build up charge, I'm going to pull that piece of tape out very slowly. And I'm pulling out a piece of tape that is about the same length as my index finger. So this is a good rule of thumb. That's a good length to work with. Longer than that, it starts to get to be difficult to work with. And then shorter than that, the effect becomes harder to see. I'm going to take the top portion. I'm going to fold it over so that I make a little tab that I can now hold on to without touching the sticky portion of the, of the tape. So now I'm going to take this. And you have to think about what surface you want to put this thing down on. I'm going to put this down on a textbook. Uh, but you may try different materials. So you might try putting it on a desktop. Uh, you might try putting on other different types of books. Obviously, you don't want to damage any of your books, so on a hardcover book. Um, you just have to try different surfaces. Um, I'll be careful about putting it on painted surfaces. You don't want to pull any of the paint off. But if you charge it well, what you should hear when you lift that tab, so I'm going to pull that tab up now, is when I pull this up, and I'm going to pull this up as quickly as I possibly can. I'm going to hold the book down so that when I pull this thing up, the book cover will stay in place, and I'll get a nice clean pull off of the, off the book. So if I do it correctly, I should be able to hear a nice ripping sound from this thing. And then if I bring my finger close to it, you'll see that it is attracted to my finger. I can actually bring in almost any object, and I see that almost any object will attract to it. I can even bring in the piece of tape that I originally used, and you'll see there's just a little bit of an attraction. This guy is attracted to anything that I bring close to it. He'll reach out and try to, to touch them. Uh, I would recommend, if you can, to not reuse the tape. If you do want to reuse the tape, then you want to just very gently take your fingers and just rub them down on both sides, including the sticky side. Don't stick it to your fingers, but just trying to pull it down so that now, if I bring my finger close to it, you'll notice that there's almost no reaction uh, at all anymore. And the reason for that is I've rubbed the charge off and I've, I've dissipated that charge. I'm going to get a fresh piece of tape, though, to show you the next uh, activity. Uh, the next activity, we're essentially going to make two of these pieces of tape. So I'm going to pull out one and two, and we're essentially doing the exact same thing we did in the first one. What we want to see is what happens if you charge these two pieces of tape and then you bring them close to each other. How will they react to each other? I'm going to stick one of these down to the book, giving it a very gentle rub so that I don't want it to be uh, stuck too hard to the book. And then I'm going to fold the other one over, make the little tab. I'm putting it somewhere else on the book. They're not touching each other. They were nowhere, nowhere near each other. I'm going to put this guy over here. So see the two pieces of tape are on there. They're not in the same spot in the book, but here's what's important about it. When I pull them up, what do you think is going to happen to the charge? Should they have the same charge or would they have different charges? Thinking about how I charge the object. Did I use the same process or did I use some different process to get these guys charged? So pretty clear I'm using the same process here. I'm going to pull both of these two up very quickly again. I got the two tabs. I'm going to pull up one and pull up the second one. If you see that it gets stuck to your finger like this, just very gently touch the edge of it and pull that thing out like that. I'm going to hold one of the pieces of tape so that it can't move very easily by bending it along its longer axis. And I'm going to bring these guys in. And you'll see when I bring them in that there is a repulsion. They do not like each other. As I bring this other piece of tape in, you'll see the other guy starts to bend away from him to avoid him. Okay, you should think about what that means about the charge of these two things. You don't have to know whether two things are positive or two things are negative or positive and negative to understand how they react to each other. What kind of charges are possible? That's what you want to think about with that one. Okay, in the last thing that we're going to do with the tape, I am going to make two pieces of tape again. But this time, I'm going to put one piece of tape down directly on top of the other one. They should both be facing the same direction. And I'm going to label them. So here's the one I'm going to put down first. I make the tab. I find a spot to put this down where it's nice and smooth and clean. This one I am going to label Okay, we'll just leave that like that. This one's going to get labeled with a B for bottom. Then I'm going to fold over the second one. 
Okay, so really important, I'm gonna tilt this up so that you can see. So when I put this next piece of tape down, I'm going to put this piece of tape down with the two tabs facing each other so they are directly on top of each other. Okay, so it's easy to start with the tab up here at the top and then work your way down. Just again, very gently push this thing down and now I'm going to use either, uh, you can use like a Sharpie. This is the top piece of tape and then underneath the top piece of tape, if I pull that guy back, is the bottom piece of tape, right? So the two tabs are T and B for top and bottom. It's not telling me what the charge on them is right now, uh, but ultimately uh, we will see that they uh, do behave a little bit differently than what happened in the last example. This time when I pull them up, I wanna grab both of the tabs and I'm very slowly pulling this up. Not pulling quickly, I don't hear the ripping sound. And you'll know if this thing has picked up any charge when you bring your finger in and you see if there's any reaction almost no reaction at all. So now what I wanna do is I wanna take the two pieces of tape, I'm gonna get a good grip on the two, and again, just like I did before, I wanna pull them quickly. Right now, these two are neutral. But when I pull them apart, I hear that loud ripping sound. Again, if it gets stuck to your fingers, just on the edges, try to touch the edges. Don't touch any other part of the piece of tape. Now when I bring these two pieces of tape together, you'll see they have a very different reaction to each other. They really like each other. I don't even need to touch them. They'll actually reach out for each other Think about what that means for the charges that they have. Now, what is specifically the charge on the top and the bottom? That is something that we'll find out later when you test out different materials. Uh, the materials that typically want to build up a negative charge are going to be plastic objects. Now, I have a um, plastic rod right here. You might not have a rod that's like this one uh, that you can use, but uh, I have found that other things, the thing that I found that worked the best, I tried out things like uh, spatulas, other kinds of plastics. Uh, these did not work nearly as well, but one thing that I did find that worked really well was uh, the plastic silverware from, or the plasticware I should say, from Ikea. Uh, and you might want to try it. It's really, the it's just like that kind of texture of material. To be honest with you, you could try it with anything. You could try a plastic plate. Uh, you might have to try several different plastic plates before you find something that works. But ultimately, once you get something that you notice does build up a charge, and you'll be able to tell because when you bring it in close to something, you'll see that thing react like the cellophane tape or like the pith ball right here. Let's see if we can fix this. There we go. Um, so in order to make the pith ball, I'm gonna do the remaining portions of this with the pith ball. Uh, you're normally gonna use plastic. Plastic will build up a negative charge. So think about what you'd wanna see when you bring this plastic rod to know whether something was negatively charged. Um, and then normally glass will build up a, pick up a positive charge if you rub it with a very smooth material like silk or uh, even nylon generally will work. With plastic, you want a very rough surface. So like if you have fur, or in this case, if you have like a stuffed animal that you could use, so if it's always a good furry stuffed animal, that should work pretty well. Or you could even use something like a wool sweater. Wool sweater probably works the best of all the materials that I've found. So that's what I'm gonna use for my investigations today. In order to make the pith ball, all I've done is taken a small piece of styrofoam that came from uh, packing material. I've broken off a small piece of it. Uh, you can see how small it is. This thing is much smaller than my fingernail tiny little piece. I tied a piece of thread to the styrofoam first. Then I took a small amount of aluminum foil and once it was tied to the string, I wrapped it carefully and then I made it as smooth as possible so that it would be nice and round. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in just a little bit here so we can see that pith ball a little bit more closely. So you can see that it is an insulating material. So there's this piece of styrofoam tucked inside of this guy, tied to a piece of thread, and then I wrapped aluminum foil and then I really rounded it off so it was nice and round. If it has sharp corners, it's not gonna hold the charge quite as well. Let's zoom out just a little bit so we can see the reaction this guy is going to have. Um, I really want you to, to notice what happens when I bring this down, this plastic rod. The way I'm gonna charge the plastic rod, let me zoom out just a little bit more here, is I'm going to rub it against the wool sweater. Doesn't take a lot, just give it a little bit of a rub. And then when I bring this down to the pith ball, you see this guy has a very dramatic reaction. Very dramatic reaction. So the first thing that he does, I'm going to touch this to discharge it. I'm going to take my piece of wool again, I'm going to rub it, and bring it down close, and I get that nice reaction to it. So now that pith ball is charged up and it's repelling the rod because they have the same, the same charge. Now one of the last activities that you'll do, and as, I, as I pointed out, actually this Ikea uh, knife actually works pretty well. It also was able to build up a little bit of a charge and I'm able to get that guy to repel away. Uh, the last thing that you're gonna be asked to do is to take some small pieces of paper. Um, let me take some paper here. Just rip it up into tiny pieces. Uh, the smaller you can make it, the more dramatic that you're going to see this effect. 
and you take that plastic rod that you found that you're able to build up a good charge on. I'm going to tilt this down just a little bit so that you can see the surface of this book. Got a few pieces of paper on here. I'm going to take that plastic rod one more time. I'm going to rub it against the, the wool. I'm going to bring this guy down and you will notice that those little pieces of paper have a pretty dramatic reaction. They're really strongly attracted to this guy and that's something you need to think about. Why is that occurring? Those are all the activities that you're going to be doing uh, and if you have any questions you'll just bring those to me in class.